Hey, what's going on guys? I hope that you are doing well today. You are tuning into the RuneScape podcast. This is episode two. And in today's episode, we are discussing the content roadmap that Jagex released for the latter half of Q4 here in 2022 and into 2023. So I hope you guys enjoy and here it is. Let's get it. Hey everybody, Uh, welcome to episode two of our podcast. Uh, my name is Let's Discuss RS, and with me today we have once again uh, Chivalric and Hello. another uh, friend in the RS3 community goes by the name of Monk Quest. What's up, guys? Hello, hello. Good evening. Well, good afternoon for you guys, but good evening. <laughs> yeah, good morning for me. That, good morning even wow okay that that's not that's not a a word i like in my vocabulary <laughs> so i take it you're not much of a morning person then. <laughs> no i'm really not um so guys i wanted to start off the podcast just um asking you guys about the fresh start worlds um both of you guys have made accounts in that game mode and we all kind of know how the (laughs) reception of the game mode was received by uh the majority of the community but um extremely positive (laughs) but um you know now that it's now that it's been released now that it's had uh a solid two three weeks to to get off the ground i just want to get your guys thoughts on the game mode itself like are you are you having fun uh you know are you having fun competing for for ranks uh you know just whatever you guys have to say about it so uh chev why don't you go first um well, uh, I wasn't actually supposed to play it, and not because of the whole controversial reason, which we'll probably get into in a little bit as well. But then I was like, you know what, let's let's just play it, I'm bored, and then... <laughs> Within, like, how long did it take them to mess it all up? Like, 30 minutes? Yeah. You have the whole lockout, server reroll and stuff? <laughs> yeah, I, I, di- I didn't quite understand it myself, but... I guess they had to wipe everybody and then put everyone back mm-hmm. on an even playing field. Yeah, so apparently like what happened was when people tried to log into the Fresh Start world, some of them was... So you were supposed to log in on a Fresh account and then you get an option, do you want to play Fresh Start Worlds or the regular game? And some people didn't get that option, just went straight into the regular game with a paid membership. So they paid to get a normal account, which obviously they didn't want. They wanted a Fresh Start Worlds account, which obviously... I understand that I had to roll that back, but yeah, great start yeah. for something. But no, to answer your question, like honestly, I've I've enjoyed it because on day one I streamed it, and honestly, if you, usually when you stream these things, it's just funny, especially can, when you can meme on Jagex and everyone is just memeing. That makes most things funny. But <laughs> I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to do something simple, get 99 thieving because it's a very fast skill and just set out a plan and the whole planning part of it was really really fun as well and i think just having to do things a little bit different because not only you are you playing kind of like an iron man but also because everything is just crowded like i couldn't do the cell doors yeah for thieving so like oh how am i going to solve that issue what am i going to be doing and kind of having to take different paths was really fun to me cool uh, Monk, you want to go? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, just on, the, it was just over Fresh Start Worlds and how we're feeling about it. I feel great about it. Um, 
Yeah, I know that there was definitely controversy, and that was that was definitely one of the parts of it too. Was that uh, if if not a big part, was that uh, it was that uh, people were logging in and having error with the actually ac actually getting into the Fresh Start world compared to paying membership and just going into a normal world. What I had heard in the first couple of minutes though was that there were people who were having their uh, main accounts. So like they already had all their 99 stats or good stats or whatever the case may be, they were actually name changing on the official website and being able to log into the game with their stats. And so oh, once yeah. that was once once that was figured out, then Jagex was like, well that can't fucking happen because then people were going to be claiming halos and shit in a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. So that was the, I think that, and I, I I don't know I could be completely wrong. I think that that was basically the. The big one, though, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, and, that was definitely uh, part of it. Yeah. So, it's um, you know, it, it's it, it, Jagex in itself is climbed to uh, just like anybody ever in companies or entities as a whole. And they're gonna make some problems and stuff, but um, <laughs> you know, telling telling anybody that they have to wait, you know, because here's the thing, <laughs> I've been playing I've been playing video games a long time, and one thing that's always because what I've seen a lot on those forums is, hey, um, I scheduled a day off today to do this, and now you're making me wait two and a half hours. I get that, and I do, and, it, and it's exciting, and it's fun, and you want to just jump right into the game, but, you know, Warcraft, RuneScape, whatever the case may be, everyone knows if you're going to take PTO, if you're going to take a day off, don't do it on day one, because chances are it ain't going to go that smooth. And, uh, you know, it's... And, and, there, and, and, and for people who exploit systems, i.e., you know, oh, I did a name change and now I'm doing all this shit, give anybody an inch, they're gonna take a mile. So, while, you know, it, it is a oversight on Jagex's end, I still feel like, you know, for as far as, was it smooth, was it not smooth? I think it was pretty smooth. You can't help that people are gonna try to take advantage of a system you know and they figured it out and had it fixed with a definitely within two hours i'm pretty sure i don't I, I think it was screwed in the first 30 minutes they, they figured out something was wrong and then it took them about two hours two and a half hours to fix and it, in that case it's like boom track record there you go and i haven't heard anything after that so i'd say like 98 percent of the whole thing was good to go and someone found that little exploit and there we are as far as fresh start worlds for me uh so I play old school mostly. I came back. I, I keep coming back to RS3 because I like the. Well, it's different now, of course, but the, the 2010 aesthetic. So, like, the updated graphics, the play style, combat of evolution, of course, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I never minded it because I, because I also, though I like point and click games, I also played. Um, games with abilities so it's like that that kind of came firsthand with me because i've always been a pc player even growing up and um so i came back on my main account and i think that there are a lot of runescape players out there who genuinely want to play runescape but too much time has passed and there is just so much to the and this is what i hear all the time it's not just me this is just what i hear from people in the real world you know because like and i can get into that later but from all the people that I've heard, face-to-face -face value. Oh man, I'd love to play that game. It's just too advanced. It's just too crazy. There's just too much stuff. And then and, and that's great. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think as far as like a coming into the game, whatever. So obviously with no denial, World of Warcraft and Blizzard Entertainment had success with their release of WoW Classic launch. And so Jagex had to think of something to kind of come up with that. And so for years, I know in old school, they were doing leagues. Um, which way you competed in and I don't know I don't necessarily know if you had to do separate membership with leagues I doubt it but anyways if you compete no. in it you get a special item etc etc so fresh start world it's a good it's a good start because it's like you get people excited to go back to the, the main game rather as a fresh cat or not it gives an incentive for veterans to go over there because it's like okay now we have a limited edition item so if you are good at the game and you want to get fast level 99s you want to be top ranked 100 in the in the leaderboard for your specific skill or overall i don't know how it goes but you will get special halos and then even if you just want to play at your own pace and can achieve the eight milestones which is all the parts of the fresh world mechanic if you achieve the eight milestones you will end up getting your 
uh, Halo are returning, obviously, after the disc of returning, which is where they used to put the bots and all that shit back in the day. But yeah, uh, I thought it was I thought it was cool. I thought it was, I th- and, and as far as the game mode as a whole, it's like I hang out with all the casuals. Like, it, like I think I think there's people that are upset that everybody's like, well, we can get into that. But well, I, I don't know how much we're going to hang up on Fresh Start Worlds. But I think that the only real hiccup is that. I have new players who want to play, and I'm like, "Hey, what's up? How you doing?" What well, I'm messing them in game. They're like, "Good. I'm trying to find a group for ED3." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> and like that, that you know, that, it's like this is not a real complaint at all. Like you know, it, it's just part of the game. It's in the game. No big deal. But there are methods that they didn't have intended. I'm sure that they, they didn't expect people, or maybe they did, and maybe they just didn't care. But they, I'm sure they didn't expect people to get. 99 combat magic range hit points in the first week and be pretty much nearly you know or whatever that would take you to combat level 124 or something without prayer and uh then then without 138 without the summoning but other than that i know that there's like a hysteria around uh getting xp fast as far as combat and stuff is concerned and getting reverse capes i I am sorry, it's long-winded. Moral of it all, if I could wrap it up and put a little bow on it. Fresh Start Worlds is super cool. Um, is there going to be money involved? I.e. people, oh, it's cash grab, you got to have separate separate account to do this. Well, for me, like I, I, I have my main account, which I love, but being an old school player, I also have like Iron Man account, I have PKing accounts, I have d- different ones like that. Mm-hmm. And it's this is the same song and dance that people with multiple accounts have just been doing forever, so it doesn't really affect me. Plus... It's like with Monk Quest specifically, that that character now, even though it had never played RS3, I'm paying membership, but then I can go right back and play old school on him too. So um, I think that there's uh, there's positives and stuff like that. And the company's got to make money, man. It just at the end of the day, it is what it is. And I, I also don't, you know, listen. If this was a if this was a twenty dollars subscription a month, it'd be one thing. But it's RuneScape. We're all we're all pretty veteran at this point. At least the player base it does retain, and you know what you're paying for. So if it's worth it, it's worth it. If not, you know they saw the open game. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from, like I would say, in my opinion, that it's definitely been successful. Uh, you know, there's been, I I believe for all the fresh out fresh start worlds there's been uh 500 plus players in every single world at all times um you know i i think one of the big complaints about the main game is that so much of the content these this these days are fractured where there's not a lot of the player base kind of in one concentrated area so i think fresh start worlds is really nice in terms of resetting that and allowing players to to group content and and find ways of getting things done together and then um also i just chef specifically how how have you liked the basically the reset economy of uh, Fresh Start Worlds. Mm, I, I think it's interesting. And to be to be honest, I've got to be honest, like when I first started playing it, I didn't care for it. I was like, I'm just going to play this as an Iron Man, get my 99th evening and get off. And didn't really think about the economy at all. Like I didn't have a positive or negative opinion on it. But then I recently watched a podcast with Mod Matt K. He was also talking about Fresh Start Worlds and I will send it to you so you can link the podcast in the description for people to watch it if they like or listen to it, whatever, um, if they really want to. Because he probably does a way better job than me explaining it. But he kind of explained on the topic of Fresh Start Worlds, it related to old school, but I think your point or that point that he made, you can probably relate to RuneScape 3 as well, is with a fresh economy, different kind of money makers that are like early game money makers become viable again. Exactly. Mm. And because they're viable again, people that, you know, come back to the game be like, hey, I, back in the day, I used to slay blue dragons and make a lot of money. And now you can do that again. Yeah. And that is, I think, a form of kind of nostalgia by having a reset economy. Yeah, totally. And um, 
have you have you heard of any uh, issues of like on or for people who are buying like wanting to buy higher end PVM gear and stuff like that because there's no kind of sets in the game like the people who are uh, going out and killing these bosses for really expensive items in the main game are they also um, because there's such less um, supply and there's still demand for them or have prices been super super high just in terms of like people trying to buy resources to train skills or things of that nature I actually don't know like maybe monk knows but like I haven't heard of anyone really PVMing like I feel yeah. like everyone is just going for the capes <laughs> yeah I can add to both of that so okay. like what he's talking about as far as uh uh Matt K, I'm pretty sure is the mod's name. Yeah, I, I had seen a lot of that too. And like Blue Dragons is definitely one of those two. Dragons are always going to be one of the go-tos as well. Um, it, it, it even goes down to, and what, what, what the mod had previously said in this thing too, is that a lot of those early level money-making skilling things that you would normally see uh, in as far as the economy can, is concerned in RS3, back to Fresh Start, is that uh, and, and, and he admits it obviously because he doesn't actually with the company any longer but he talks about it's a lot of those items were botted items so like I mean we're not just talking about dragon bones we're talking about feathers talking about cooked meat talking about all those things I mean like I mean so it's like I mean like bare bare minimum stuff and like because there was no economy in the fresh set that means as soon as a player well it's not lumberage anymore it's obviously taverly birth rope area but once someone logs into there and even though in the fresh start world you would see maybe like I don't, it's probably it's died down significantly now but even the first couple of days of fresh start world you were going to see everybody uh in the mine and the smithy right there outside of uh birth rope and stuff like that and that was people capitalizing on obviously their smithing and stuff like that but they were also putting the market in for tools so you get a if you you know rs3 whatever i don't know it's been a long time uh for me too so forgive me but i know that in rs3 you do like the little starter assignment stuff like that and you get this dwarven army hatchet and like i think the equivalence of them are about to steal like steel quality mm -hmm. here so then these people were in the smithy for the first couple days of fresh start world just just grinding out uh, an economy for everything steel and above so like now you could go straight to the ge and purchase mm -hmm. those tools by now definitely but yeah all those incremental little things and stuff and then uh so that was just a uh, the economy aspect of it and now as far as PVMing and gearing so I just seen a post and I don't necessarily know how the armor is made like I said I, I'm coming into this podcast as a casual but I did see a post where it was like four or five guys all decked out in uh, masterwork probably it wasn't masterwork it was um, uh, it's not Torva what's above Torva um, it's the stuff with like the horns like that come like down or abolisher abomination what is that gear set hmm i'm um, actually thinking no i'm sorry yeah it's uh i have it on my rs3 account and it's it's terrible stuff anyways it's wow i'm embarrassed i can't i i knew the name but now i can't remember it <laughs> it's now. all good but uh Anyways, uh, high-end PVM armor, and they have it, right? And they were big flexing on the Fresh Start world because it was this group of people. Um, PVMing is absolutely happening. People are trying to corner the market in them. I know it's happening. Yeah. Uh, um, and, but but to what extent, uh, and this is only speculation on my end, uh, the people who are actually doing that, who aren't just going for the reverse cape and the halos and all that jazz, are, and this is just, this is just my opinion, hot take, but I truly believe you're going to see a lot of them account sharing. You're going to be seeing a lot probably, of them putting yeah. in the hours. Uh, if if not, they're probably multi-boxing, so they're going to have two or three characters, four or five characters run on one computer, and it's just one guy like this. You know, just sort of, the South the South up. Park meme. <laughs> it, you know it. So it's like I know that that I, it has to happen, right? Because there's a money incentive, well, in-game currency. Yeah, but, um, and, and a little controversial thing because I don't know necessarily. Street, you've uh, you said that you hadn't been in Fresh Star World, right? No, I haven't. So a lot of the, what's going on too with the economy 
which is a hot take and it, i mean listen it's gonna happen no matter what like i mean you can't you can't give these people the easter ring without them finding a way to gamble off of it i mean like they had to change the color of the easter ring so now like when you're an easter egg you don't you're not different colors you're just one color so that way somebody can't make gp off the fucking easter ring but what's happening is in fresh start world is that they're doing a ratio for gold conversion from uh fresh start world to rs3 so i okay. last time i checked which was which, last time i checked which was almost probably four days ago deep down in there someone was trying to give a uh uh one to 60 ratio so one mil gold in fresh start world would be equivalent to 60 mil gold in rs3 and wow it, it's definitely it's definitely prevalent it's definitely happening and with ed3 and some of the pet the, even the free pet that you get from fresh start world the, the free pet is um this 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 thing that follows you around that has a bunch of perks and one of those perks is like alchemy free alks and stuff like that so even someone without magic level could do a couple alks a day with like a with like a couple like 10 minute cooldown or some nonsense but more or less um the wealth equivalent for per account is skyrocketing because of even the even the exploited uh e3 thing which is like i said you know i'm sure you know what e3 is but they're doing death runs basically they run in there they die they're, they are they kill as much as they can they die they run back out they start it over again and the things that ed3 drops while it's not necessarily good for gold i mean on a major scale you're still going to get things that can be alkable and i mean people on their way to 99 are already making 15 mil maybe 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 not that much maybe let's just say 10 mil but then equivalent that to the standard of, you know, uh, if they wanted to do the illegal uh, gold transferring, their it's... 10 mil just turned into 600 mil. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. In, in RS3. So there's a little bit of that going on, which okay. is a down downside to it. Uh, but uh, the, the, the economy as a whole, it's very good for the casual player. And if you're a rule breaker, it's probably really good for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, as as just Joe Simpleton, I mean, someone going into it and stuff like that, it's it's there's still I would say there's still a lot of aspect, and there will be because nobody wants to really do the the menial stuff. There's still a lot of aspects of Iron Man, so like you're gonna have to go out and you're gonna have to, uh, especially like for like quest stuff, like hardly anybody's interested in actually questing in free start world i mean they definitely are like they want to get like like uh the key quest to have advantages but very few are going for quest cave they don't really care for quest cave yeah and yeah. uh there's just so many niche items in there that people aren't making that you gotta go out and do it yourself so in, in that regard i've always loved that though i always thought it was super fun to do the iron man-esque thing as far as the economy yeah cool guys well i think uh We'll move on from fresh start worlds but i'm glad you wait, guys have oh wait, wait for, before we move on can i just get some other like thoughts that i've been having off for like a little while yeah for sure go for uh, it because um one thing about the launch like obviously with the with the bug about the name changing and then you have like a max account i saw people calling jagex a lot of slack for it but why are you going to be testing changing a name on an account when you're sure. testing fresh start worlds yeah <laughs> like how does it ever come up I, I just wanted to just get that off and also another thing is with the whole money grab thing is people are saying it's a money grab but i would bet you probably everything i own on that if they put this event with the inverted skill caves in the main game with some very predatory fomo whatever mtx whatever yes. they would make five times as much money yeah and that's what the that's what fresh starts world is right at the end of the day is that uh, that's the that's the biggest one going around is fomo for uh fear of missing out yeah. and uh it, it is it's definitely a corporation thing it's definitely a video game thing and everything now so it's hard it's hard to really say but yeah i agree i mean like people should be upset that it's that, that there is a the fear of missing out aspect of it but it's like it, it doesn't really affect the base game it doesn't affect the economy you know, it doesn't affect anybody's day. This is totally an optional opt-in thing, and if you want to do it, you got to you got to pay got to pay daddy a couple dollars. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I think I think FOMO as well is I understand that it is predatory, but it also is 
um, up it's up to the individual as well I mean you know FOMO is real but I think in many cases you could just tell yourself well it's just a video game and I don't really care <laughs> Yeah, but it's so hard for like I, I, I said I've said that in multiple videos as well, and then I just get people just in the comments like, "Oh yeah, but it's still predatory. It's still this. It's still that." And I'm like, "It's a cosmetic item. Like, if this was the best in slot, whatever, <laughs> staff, sword, whatever, then sure, I get it. Then there's like a real thing. But if it's just a green colored Santa hat or an inverted scale cape, like they don't do anything. Yeah, at all. Yeah. All right. And it. And it's kind of it's kind of divisive to the community as well. Okay, number one, what is the community? So at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of people who have a lot of opinions, and then you're going to have a lot of people who are willing to go as far as voicing them online. Obviously, we have RuneScape Twitter, and now we have RuneScape Reddit. I personally don't subscribe to either of those because it's not a good place to be. <laughs> and if you're not mentally for, and if you're not mentally uh, for it, it's just only going to knock you down. Because at the yeah. end of the day, there is too much negativity. Because that's the thing is that the the there's an old saying. It doesn't even matter. Runescape or Vald, it doesn't matter. Um, just out there in the world is that you, you uh, people people have a hard time remembering the good times, but everybody remembers the bad times. So when you see community posts like that, 99% of it is going to be why I was wronged and why what are they doing wrong. And that's because yeah. you've been wronged or emotional about something that you're going to be able to voice it. You need to voice it and hope for some resolve, even though you're probably not going to get resolved because unfortunately, you know, like I said, I started playing in 2005. So a long time ago, okay? And back then, you could literally pay for your membership over the landline telephone. Okay, it was a long time ago. I remember and, that. <laughs> and and, um, and uh, back then, Jagex support, even not even Jagex support, let's talk about World of Warcraft and Blizzard too. Those both support teams were so awesome that you could literally, like little 12 year old me could call them and be like, hey, what's going on? Um, I really don't have money for membership, so can you like give me membership? And they would, like that was back then. Like, you know, <laughs> like times are different now. Yeah. The, and, and, so, and so much so that these companies want to be that. They really do want to be that. That's why they, that's why they have, that's why they, what's what they built their company in the first place, but they can't. Because what happens is, is there's so many people out there that take advantages of these systems. So going back to the community thing, uh, and wh why I can't be bothered is that people will people want to express like, hey, this is where my account or my account's been hijacked or I've got this going on and stuff like that to a 360 loop, um, uh, uh, dis dis dishuman connected automatic machine of a pre-programmed uh, response. It'll be like, oh, we're sorry that you got screwed. And that's it, right? So. It's sad, and but but it's not the it's not necessarily because they're cheap, and it's not necessarily because they're money. It's because you if they if they be if if anybody in this world tries to be nice, especially a company, bad people are just going to take advantage of them, and that's what happened. And like so now, yeah, as well, uh, you know, it's uh it's 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 tough. So as far as the, going back to the community thing, I feel like fresh starts as a whole, and, and, and I know Jagex will be able to see this because it's. Because then people will bring up, oh, it's all about accounts created. They want in their last quarter to be able to push numbers up for accounts created. Well, yeah, yeah, they do. But they, but they also want genuine accounts. Like they also want like genuinely new players. So like it's hard to it's hard to say what is going to be a new player whenever you are uh, a recurring player, a player, or a recurring paying me player who just had to make a new email account to make this new fresh start world. So like in their projections, if there's anything that I could personally say is probably skeevy, is that you're going to have fresh start guys that are gonna come, uh, I'm sorry, that, that you're gonna have all these fresh start accounts that come on there that project their numbers to make it look like they have new players, okay? But as far as the money aspect of it, they've got money. I, I seriously don't think that it's a cash grab as much as it, as much as it is a, uh, you know, somebody higher up probably has nothing to do with Jagex or them. It's just like, hey, like, like, why is the recurring player base so low? What can we do to 
make that up. Oh, you can do that. Do that, and then that's why we have fresh starts now. It's yeah. all about numbers, analytics, whatever yeah. the case may be. They, yeah. Didn't they say that they also had like a whole analytic team, like an outside analytic team, just analyzing the market and how they could get See? new players in? Yeah, and I didn't this know was that. their option. Yeah, that's funny. All right, that's yeah. I had no idea. That makes perfect sense. Though. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, they said that when they when they first talked about it, like how they had this like company just do the research for them, and they did research for all sorts of big games. Like I, I'm pretty sure for for some Activision games and some others as well. Like uh, they they didn't name it, but they just named some companies: Activision, EA, etc. So they are not small companies. So I would assume that this organization or company or whatever they hired to do this research probably knows what they're doing. Yep. All right. So let me um, let me segue this into into something else. So we're gonna be um, we we got a lot of lot to talk about here. But um, Jagex did release their 2022 end of the year kind of content roadmap and uh, into 2023 as well, and just on the subject of kind of uh mtx i guess you could say but uh, one of the things that they are looking to do is um they're wanting to release more uh retro overrides into the game and i know that they've just put out some retro overrides i think within the last couple of months but moving forward with jagex um with these type of things because obviously the community uh wanted the retro overrides how do you think the company should go about uh putting these into the game do you think that they should be earned uh, be able to be earned through in-game achievements should they put them in the oddment store should they be locked behind treasure hunter uh should they be put in solomon's do you guys have any opinions on on how jagex should be implementing uh, these type of things oh yeah absolutely take yeah, it away I mean, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i'll just wait for you <laughs> So, so like I said, I'm an old school player and stuff like that, and it's like I like I like the I like the retro visuals for sure. Here, okay, but there's there but there's there's some obviouses, right? So like, you have the loyalty point system. So I've had this account, mm -hmm. my main account, for 18 years, and because of that, I got a crap load of them. Okay, I got more loyalty points than I can spend. So I've got all the retro ones that the loyalty point store offers, which is cool and they're great. Um. And, and and while it is retro, they are still kind of an eyesore, because at the end of the day, it's even like while while the armor stayed true to the armor, because whenever they're doing these renderings, I'm sure in whatever development program they're doing, they're just doing the armor itself, maybe like throwing up an image as like a background and stuff like that. But when you implement it and put it into the actual game, it's like, oh look, I'm this fucking blocky brick compared to all these flaming fire dragons around me, and it's like. The retro overrides is awesome. I think they should have them. Um, I feel like I feel like the very first thing anybody was going to say is like, okay, what what is retro? How far are we talking to go back? So I mean, it, I'm so and I don't I haven't looked into this 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 topic enough to actually understand which which items are talking about in particular. But let's just say, for example, and this is just you know put the whole blanket over the whole thing. Which is they're gonna do any any armor that had an armor previous to 2010 because that's that's probably well I'd say like 2012 that's probably 2012 2013 is like the halfway point between like the 07 era and where we're at now something like that whatever yeah that's 10 any years armor, ago as well <laughs> yeah right 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 so any well whatever the case may be halfway it doesn't matter basically we could do the we could do it all the way back but what I'm implying is is that any armor that's an old school that RS3 also has. And I think old school right now, it only goes up to like Torva, I'm pretty sure. I don't think they have like Pernix or anything like that. I think they have Torva. They might, I don't know. But Yeah, they have the, that new Missouri armor. It's kind of their equivalent. That's true. Pernix, that's the I new believe. raid stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. yep. which is cool. But uh, but just but, but just what old school has and what RS3 has now, because obviously it's the progression of the game and stuff like that. I feel like 
as far as the armor's aesthetics, it needs to be it needs to be RuneScape plus or or old school RuneScape plus aesthetics. And what I say by that is is like yes, like we're super grateful that you want to put those armors back into the game, but also don't make it look so abruptly stupid to where like I should feel bad because I want to wear this but you've made the art rendering so hideous on it that I stick out like a sore thumb compared to everybody else I feel like it the plus aspect of what I said comes into like if I'm gonna have which I know they already have in the game right now I'd hope they'd fix it but like the rune plate body mithril plate body black steel whatever override that they have it's like that's a great looking armor set but it, but the, they need to push those textures up. Keep keep the shape, keep the shininess a- aspect of it. You don't have to make it look like it's charcoal in a beautiful oil painted world. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like it can be still it can still have the shape. It can still have the colors. Just sh- put some shine on it and and, and put push those pixels up, right? So whatever whatever they're gonna do with bringing the old stuff back. Please just like just like keep keep the core of it, but don't make players feel bad that they want to wear it because you're gonna make them feel bad if it just if it just looks so unpolished and so half butt, right? Yeah. And then as far as far as how it should be implemented and achievements and stuff, I feel like the best choice should be like the same way that you would get the defense levels because if it's just armor we're talking about i mean and, and and fine we can we can say weapons too that doesn't matter with attack and defense okay so you have armors and weapons it, it should be as far as how you earn them is just by your base levels if you can wear it there's then you should be able to qualify to have the override now that doesn't mean you get it for free just because you have the levels for it but what i'm saying is it shouldn't be locked behind hard achievements because at the end of the day the majority of people who are really hmm. going to wear like the old school stuff yeah. are probably people who are returning players to the game and they're just like oh i don't like like all this like new art style stuff but i do like this art style stuff so i'll just play the game and level up my character and use this equipment while they're still that low level you know what i'm saying and yeah. eventually yeah. get them acclimated and stuff so i don't think i don't think it should be locked behind like crazy achievements to get like a, a freaking uh, obviously it's already in the game but the, but the equivalents of a, a bronze plate body. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, that's like the easiest armor you should get. It shouldn't be locked behind achievement. Instead, you know. And uh, as far as the currency for it, I do like, I do like, and I, I just personally noticed this. Like I said, I'm a returning player to the game. I do like what they did with the Ottoman store. So, like, yeah, I remember when they had, I remember when they had, like, Squeal of Fortune. So like with Squeal of Fortune and stuff, that's where you were getting all that. I don't know what the names of them are called. But I know there's like the Light Bringer, and then there's like the Dark Armor, and then there's like the Flame Armor, and it's like old school stuff. Well, that's not old school, but it's you know ten probably years old now. But yeah, with the, the, the like, you know okay. So I know what armors, you're talking about. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Those armors you'd only used to get through your keepsake or not keys or not keepsake keys, but just like normal keys or Squeal of Fortune or whatever. And like now you can get it through Ottomans. And I and I being a casual player, I hadn't really even got into Ottomans yet. So like just last year, or no, just this year, actually matter of fact, when I joined uh with you, Street Smarts, I was on my free to play character and I opened up the Ottoman store. I had seen all that selection of it and I was like, that's cool. Like that's cool. That makes sense. Yeah. You get this and you can pay if you, if you get this currency, you can take this currency and you can get this with it. It's great. And what is it? Half of it's all cosmetic stuff. So if they're gonna just shove it in there with the other ottomans, maybe if it if it's like if it's like the top tier stuff, like uh, or, or top tier as far as attack and defense levels is concerned, it should be higher amounts of ottomans, perhaps. And then if it's like like I said, the equivalents of a bronze plate body, like the lower amount of ottomans. But that's just me not even knowing the situation as a whole. I don't know what they're putting into the game or like what they're trying to override and stuff like that. So yeah. But yeah. Yeah. What about you, Chev? What do you, uh, <laughs> how do you think they so should So first of uh, all, like, I, I put a picture in our chat right now of the Dragon Scimitar they recently did. Yeah. Is that yeah. kind of the art style like you want to see? That looks great. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. That's what I'm pretty sure what they want to do. I think they want to do like the Neat's Not Helm, the Dragon Dagger some of those type of items from what i understand you're absolutely right 
I didn't even think about that. That's a great example. It's got to shine. It shines. That's what's important. It, lo- it looks polished. It looks polished, and that's what it should be. But no, like, see, I think I have quite an unpopular opinion overall on this subject. Is I'm 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 a firm believer in buyable cosmetics because I feel like RuneScape does a very poor job on cosmetics. If you look at a game like Fortnite, for example. It's a free game and all they sell is cosmetics. And I feel like RuneScape can do such a better job on cosmetics that people want. And these retro ones are cosmetics that people want. And why, like, I would love to see them come from a RuneCoin store, but for an amount that's equivalent to one bond of RuneCoin stores, points, whatever. Mm-hmm. So like you have this means of earning it in game, but if you just want to buy it, you can also just buy it. Like straight up with money. Yeah. Okay. Because I feel like if they exploit the rune coin system a bit more and put more things into that store that people actually want instead of some things, I I feel like it never gets updated or I never really hear about it being updated. It just could be me, but I never really hear about this new cool thing come to the rune coin store. Just have all these sick overrides just in there. Because people will know that those come from the RuneCoin store. So when you see someone with like that sick outfit or whatever, compared to someone wearing, I don't know, trim masterwork or whatever on an Iron Man, people know, well, Iron Man's are not a good example because they don't have MTX, but um, you know, you, when you see trim masterwork, it's like, okay, that's an actual achievement from someone because they either got the amount of money for it or they bought it. And when you see this other cool armor set that someone over, overwrote on their trip masterwork, you know, like, oh, they they bought it. It still looks cool, but whatever. Because I just feel like nowadays RuneScape is kind of something like a bit of a fashion show, which is fine and it's great. Oh, yeah. But I, I just feel like as long as there's still value, like, for example, the Completion Escape, it has value. When you see someone with a Completion Escape, you know they grinded for it and that's an achievement. But I feel like an armor set or something to me personally, that's that's not really an achievement in any way, shape, or form. Unless it's like a diet armor set, like for example, Third Age Serenic or Lengs or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is like why I really wanted it to come from the Boomcoin store and them using it a bit more is so that it might take a bit of pressure off the treasure hunter and that they earn more money through something that I feel like it's a bit more ethical, so to say where people just know what they're buying like you spend x amount of money and you get what you want yeah instead of people gambling in the hopes they get whatever they want yeah for sure i i definitely agree with that as well um just uh just real quick um i just want to get your guys opinions on on the the new master max cape look uh, and design uh, since we're kind of in in on looks and stuff right now um, so they came out with a a new cape for uh, 120 all skills and um, me and Chev are on we are on Twitter and uh, there were a lot of accusations flying around I guess you could say on just the design and and how it looks and uh from what i could tell i didn't see a lot of uh positivity uh surrounding the the design of it so um do you guys have any 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 words on on how it looks or um you know how it's customizable um you know i know i know that a lot of people at the very least would love it so the particle effects could at least be customized yeah um apparently yeah. there's no system in place to do that because they have talked about this before apparently from what i understand and they've oh my i'm trying to whilst we're talking i'm trying to get back to the wilderness fortress to do my thieving but i just got yeeted by a greater demon <laughs> um <laughs> No, but on a serious note, um, apparently there's no system in place to change those particles because they talked about this once with the trimmed completion escape because a lot of people don't like the gold color, including me, um, where they could just change it to whatever they want because they got the trimmed completion escape, which is arguably one of the more harder things to get in the game 
we should be able to customize it, not just the cape, but also the particles. But apparently, till this date, there's no system in place to change that. I don't know how true that is. I didn't see a source, but I saw that answer from multiple people. So probably multiple people are saying it. There's probably some truth in it. Honestly, I, I, I do like the design. I do like the fact that you can wear it and still show off your trimmed completion scape or your regular completion scape. Because mm -hmm. right now you kind of have to, obviously your max scape is part of completion scape, but you kind of have to make a choice. Like otherwise, if, if they didn't have it, you had to make a choice of, am I going to show off 120R or am I going to show off a trimmed completion scape, which is a more difficult achievement. And now you can show off both. And I don't know, like I'm not the biggest fan of the particles myself, but at the same time, I do like the concept behind it. It's literally the colors of the skill menu, and it's about you achieving max level in all skills. So, makes sense. Yeah, I just I heard I heard some people just say that some things like um, it looked like they just took scissors and just kind of started cutting <laughs> into the cape for the design, yeah. and you know, it just looks a little uh, a little too kind of cut and chopped um and uh, i love that i love that part of it though okay okay the, par the, the particle thing are you guys talking about like the color that comes off that the bottom yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the yeah. I, I i could i could live without that but that's me personally that's totally biased because like i'm not like an rgb guy i don't like that kind of stuff i just like color you know what i'm saying and like the cake can just speak for itself i don't need any flash to it but again being an old guy and that's and i'm biased in that regard uh, the, the 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 scissors thing that you're making mention it's legends cape it looks like legends yeah. Cape. Yeah, 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 and legends, yeah, yeah. And legends cape uh, is yeah. a beautiful cape you know what i'm saying so if you're gonna wear this cape as a white cape which i haven't refer i'm in reference right now i've got the uh i'm actually up on the runescape website uh news post where they're introducing the maxter max cape right now it shows the multiple variations of like the three or four players standing around uh, the burial site that they're going to be implementing in Varrock or Falador if they haven't already yet, and um, dude, they look awesome. So like in this image in particular, there's obviously the guy standing closest to it, and he's got the new white cape on, and it's got the it's got the flared the flared out cuts at the bottom, of course. Yeah. But then on his cape, separate than the other cape, and I'm assuming that this is probably the difference in what Chev was just talking about between the trimmed and the the, the other one, but, um, you know, you can kind of see, like the, the, like, the faint V on one while the other one doesn't have a V next to, uh, it looks like a girl character wearing the red cape. But, um, but then, like, on the back ends of it, you get this, like, end of the banner type of, it, it looks, it looks like a, it looks like a <laughs> it looks like a medal. It looks like a participation medal with a ban or not participation, but like a medal with a little banner coming off of them. I think those look great. Um, again, I think I think yeah. So, it, like I said, so if it's if it's if it's if it, I don't I, I doubt they have them now or they have ever in see. I don't know. I think the gold collar might look okay if you're going with, and this kind of goes back to the other thing, it might, the gold collar might look good if you have classic armor things. So maybe, the, and I'm you know, not a conspiracy theorist here, but maybe that's possible that with having that traditional collar, because I'm pretty sure a lot of them have always been gold uh, for mm -hmm. the for even 99 capes and stuff, mm -hmm. and like off under the shoulder or whatever like that, it's all gold. Um, that's gonna look really good with the retro stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like it is silly. Uh, in a that, game. Wait, wait, but just isn't that gold color? Isn't that customizable, or is that the part that is? I think it. I think it's That's like the, the little, the little shoulder flares that come out. Yeah. Oh right, 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 right. On yeah. the old design. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, but um, overall, from a casual standpoint, shit looks great. Yeah. I'll probably never. I'll probably never have one in my life. But hey. Yeah, I mean neither. Got it. <laughs> Rock it. And it looks great. It, it looks actually, I saw it in game because a friend of mine has it and I was standing next to him and I was just showing him my Max Cape because I think I have a very, very nice white Max Cape. Um, and we were standing next to each other and the Max Cape, for example, looked very flat compared to his cape that looked like, well, an actual cape, like a person is wearing the cape. 
it felt yeah. alive and it felt like like you said the legendscape it gave me legendscape vibes as well and i was like this looks great i love this it's a good design yeah cool yeah i was just i was just kind of seeing if you guys thought that the the design of it kind of um reflected uh you know somebody's accomplishment of getting 120 all skills which is a very big accomplishment so having such a such a grind for 120 all and then just seeing that cape you know hopefully people uh you know feel good about the design and in comparison with the with the accomplishment yeah, um, I, th I think the difficulty with something like this as well is you kind of need to make it in line with the completion escape and the max cape. You can't just make something completely different or completely new because obviously it's kind of in the same same vein of accomplishment. Yeah. So um, this, I guess, can kind of tie in uh, with each other, but uh, as part of that content roadmap, um, they were saying that they'd like to be introducing a new skilling location um, into the game, uh, as well as uh, new training methods. Um, can you guys, you know, picture uh, any any areas of the map uh, in game, or just any areas of the game where? something could be implemented that uh you know that that might make sense <laughs> i guess you could say well can i add, can i add to that as well because i look because i don't i don't really know i, I want to make sure the question is framed correctly so when it says we're adding a new new skilling area does that mean like a hub like you can go to this hub and it's going to have a, if not all the skills trainable there like a lot of the skills trainable there is that what this is it's it's probably going to be an area. Um, well, I, I'm not really sure. I, I guess that's that's my question. But for for previous, um, I would say previous content updates that are revolved around skilling, they usually target about three skills. Wouldn't you say, Chev? Yeah, like. like I, I think the area could definitely mean like just you know a new skilling area for one skill. Obviously, it kind of depends on what skill it is because certain skills, like for example, archaeology needs an entire area because that's how the skill works. But something like woodcutting just needs a tree somewhere or a couple of trees. I, I was just thinking like the accidental fire making and fleshing that yeah, they yeah, released I, I on something like that on know. Anachronia. They they yeah. released a an area. Um, that's right next to the ranch at a time, which is like the player owned farm for uh, Dinosaur yeah. Island. Um, they added a little space there uh, to make the new uh, God Arrows um, in game. So I'm th I'm thinking it's probably going to be something like that, where they'll they'll find an area of the game that that may be a little lackluster and try and you know, uh, pump it up a bit. Yeah, pump it up a bit with um, w with some with some new skills. Um, I think that's totally viable. I think they've definitely done that in the past. I think that I and, and I mean that's basically what they have done is they've taken the old out with the old and with the new. I think that's a good idea. I will again, not not a big speculation person, but if but I mean something that crosses my mind is that. Um, Old school RuneScape, as of recently, just got a RuneCrafting update with where they have a new RuneCrafting mini game. Um, uh, the name passes me. Alters. Uh, Guardians of the Rift. That's it. Guardians yeah, of the yeah, Rift. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> how that works is that it is a um, non instanced mini game. So it actually is taking you from uh, the inside of each altar, uh, RuneCrafting altar, and then putting you back into a hub. So it's like. I don't know. I don't know if it's better than the abyss or not, or whatever. But it's definitely something like that without actually having to change the abyss. Um, I only say any of that because then referring back to what this is, that is kind of a neat thing where it's a 
it's a it, it's it, it's an area that's going to take you to other areas but isn't instanced so that's a big possibility probably of what they're going to do with this new area yeah and also in that'd that, be cool i'm reading over i'm reading over your notes as well here um and like i said I'm, don't let me take the thing away from it but also hinting at the new skill so i don't know if it was in the same exact post on that roadmap i actually yeah. had that roadmap yeah, yeah it's, it's actually on the roadmap this, this it's like separate to the skill though so okay that i would i would say. assume it has nothing to do with it although yeah yeah yeah, I so just my own thoughts on that. I was just thinking I just gave it a little little bit of thought. I would I would love to see um in RuneScape, I would love to see some kind of underwater content. Um yeah. now I don't really know what that would look like necessarily but you know there is that there is the one single quest um uh the the quest that unlocks the monthly oyster dnd beneath curse tides yeah beneath curse tides which takes place on tutorial island a sunken tutorial island yeah, i remember that one um and you kind of you kind of swim around uh underneath the water um but regardless of did that get, did they get rid of the quest that came way before that one that you're underwater and that's where and, you got the uh fish bull helm and all that yeah oh, no that's, that's yeah that's oh yeah that's part of the pirate quest line um so they do they do have those couple instances but in terms of like a new a new skilling location and new training methods or something i would love to see them go in the direction of maybe some kind of like you know quote unquote you know atlantis uh you know type of thing where you know you may you may kind of discover some hidden uh underwater city or something and and uh from that point forward uh, there would be you know uh skills and and trainable methods tied to like an underwater piece of of content i don't know what you guys think about that i i think it sounds cool like i'm i'm just really thinking because a lot of this like like for example what you're describing now could really depend on what skill is going to be released let's say hypothetically sailing would be released right <laughs> <laughs> like it it i don't see it happening because i feel like Me all neither. the content sailing could offer is already in the game dungeoneering ports and the eastern lands pretty much match that together and you have kind of sailing yeah um plus i would absolutely hate it but that's besides the point um so then something like that wouldn't make sense but in general i think it would like it it would just be niche but i don't know what about you guys but like i feel like the two skills that are currently really lacking besides maybe rune crafting till 90 uh, to be fair not really but Woodcutting, the best method is unlocked at level 40 woodcutting. And the same goes with fishing from like, I'm pretty sure it's like 50 fishing or something in uh, Menafoss till I think it's 90 when you can go to Briftonus. You're just in Menafoss. Like there's nothing to fill that gap in between. And yeah. I feel like that's something, I'm pretty sure they talked about a little while ago. I don't remember if it was old school or RuneScape 3 that talked about it. I definitely know Old School talked about it, but I think RuneScape 3 talked about it as well, is filling in those gaps, like how they did with the accidental fire making and fletching update. Because, like fishing, like I'm fr at Menophos from level, I think it's 50 or something, or 56 or whatever, till level 90. That's something, sure, that's in Old School RuneScape, that's very common, but if you look at archaeology, for example, pretty much every single level you go to a different spot, which it's a bit extreme, of course, but even mining, every like 10 levels, you go to a new spot, which I think is like the good variation, and a gradual, um, you know, growth of a skill and like excitement because you're kind of like, oh, I'm curious to see what place I'm going next to or what area I'm looking at for the next like 20 hours or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Agreed. you could, I, I guess you could essentially do some deep sea fishing, but 
you know in between those levels from 50 to 90 you could go to the the deep sea hub and and uh do some content there but yeah i i agree there definitely is big big gaps within skills and I go back over what both of you had said actually so you were talking about the underwater stuff i think that's kind of what 83 even i don't i don't know much yeah, about yeah. all that stuff but that's underwater too that's yeah like, that's like, true i I think like a hub though, like actually having like like an Atlantis and RuneScape, obviously super cool. And then they could they could they could form a bunch of stuff over that stuff. And then um, and then um, oh gosh, there goes my thoughts. Oh, um, Mind crap, what were you? Uh, boot cutting and fishing. Oh sure, yes, thank you. So then like <laughs> here's the, here's the trade off, right? Obviously. There are things to do in between those, but it's uh, but but they're not the best. And as as veteran players, are, you don't even have to be necessarily a veteran player, but you just you have to have a little know how of the game. Only two forms of trading are going to ever be of real interest: best XP or best money. So with those two skills and stuff like that, I mean. There's already filler there. It's just that nobody does those fillers because it's not good money or it's not the good XP. So it's like they could put fillers in there that are good XP or good money. But if they if they if they make the better one of of either target, it just makes the previous one obsolete. So like oh 100 yeah. So for for instance, Menethos. I've never done this, but I, but I'm sure I'm, I'm just taking a word for it because I have heard you know how that works. So like Minifos fishing, you know, take you from that that low level all the way to that high level, and you're sitting there doing the grind. Okay, it's like obviously they can add something on the in between, shake up the boredom a little bit, have have a new set of pixels to look at and stuff. But what'll be the incentive to go from Minifos to the new location? It's like. Now that 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 third element is what I'd argue. So like, no, it might not necessarily be the best money. It might be just about equal. Or if it's like, no, it might not be the best XP, but it might just be just about equal. And is that going to is that going to make the quality of life better? Do I want to hurt myself because I've been sitting at this Menifo screen for ten plus hours, twenty plus hours, doing the same on and off thing, right? So it's like. So I, it's definitely doable, I, I, you know, but I think the reason why it's probably, I don't know, uh, and then they might implement that stuff in the future too, but it's just all things considered. That's what sucks, is that on the surface level, as far as feeling out the game, it's like they could do fun stuff. They could implement fun stuff. They could make oh, it to where it's, <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's, you give the player base an inch and they're gonna take a mile in the positive or the negative aspect of it. So you give them a new fish to fish, and they're like, "Oh, why is it not good? Come on, Jack, get your crap together. Why is this fish not good? It should, you just put it in. It should be the best one. I want to make all the money right now. <laughs> I want to have all the XP right yeah, exactly. now. Yeah. So it's like, and it's like, because then because they add something that's that's just more of an aesthetic aspect of it, or, or they add something that's just more of a to break up the norm." of you just sitting there doing barbarian fishing is the one that I'm noticeable, you know, that I know about, like sitting there doing trout and barbarian fishing and it's like everyone does Edge 99 and it's terrible and it's drop, 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 drop. And it's like, you can break that up, but only a few people are going to be like, oh, this is awesome. Thank you for getting me away from that. But the other people are going to be like, well, it's still yeah. not as good as barbarian fishing, so I'm just going to sit here barbarian fishing. Yeah, and it's those, it's those same people who, who, will, who will tell you that the early and mid-game needs tons of work <laughs> the, to be I, I i fully agree with what you're saying but like my problem with boot cutting and fishing as well is it doesn't really fit into the game anymore when it comes to experience rates like i feel like the experience rates of those skills even at like minimum intensity just regular training not using crystallize or any other fancy training of met trading methods is very much behind something like mining and smithing or okay. name any other skill and the way they updated divination a couple it's like a year ago now i believe where they made it a bit quicker to actually um to actually just convert the memories and to be just how divination works with the image memories giving you more experience without really changing the core of the skill and I feel like 
something like that would really help with woodcutting and fishing but even just a spot that just flat out gives a bit more experience that isn't incredibly more like to get my 99 woodcutting on my main i spent 40 million gp if i would do it now that would probably go towards the 100 millions because soul runes were like 700 gp at that point and they're now like 2.5k each so it would be ridiculously expensive to get woodcutting which is a gathering skill and you could say okay sure that's what you want to do but also if i don't do it i'm looking at 60k to 90 i think it's 90k or something experience rates and for runescape 3 yeah, that is just very very mm -hmm. low and very out of place and they just want you to go to the late game as quick as you want as possible which to yeah. certain people is a bad thing but i actually feel like it's a good thing like sure if you really want to grind play old school runescape but runescape 3 is like more of a smooth journey to you know get to that max cape but after the max cape if you go to for 120s that is kind of i feel like the 1 to 99 grind on old school is kind of the 99 to 120 or 1 to 120 grind on old on runescape 3 totally yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. yeah it sounds like those two skills they definitely at least those two skills they need to uh yeah. fix that up because yeah i didn't even know that again i come from the casual standpoint so it's like to hear to hear 90k xp an hour is bad i'm like oh shit <laughs> you know because yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. i've been used to so it's like compared to all the other skills so and if it's just those two skills that are lacking that just seems kind of lazy on their part to not implement those get those up and at least it's you know even xp rates across the board throughout the skills yeah i'm pretty sure the average experience rate is about 200k for most skills when you're like around level 85 ish yeah. you're starting to look at 200k experience which it's still a lot of experience, but it's still a bit of a grind to get to 99, which I think is a perfect spot. And obviously, certain skills like active thieving from 90 onwards is literally 1 million experience an hour, which is ridiculous. Like, that is more the extreme part. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure something like... I think mining, if you have all the boosts at Seren Stones at level... Is it like 87 or something? Is... Like... 200k experience an hour or something 210k experience now which is fully afk which i think is a perfect spot like yeah. i think that's great i mean it really just makes sense to have the elevated xp rates because it's runescape 3 and basically the one the 120 is the new 99 so um oh yeah 100 percent. yeah and um yeah, on that note, I mean, we might as well just jump in. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on uh, a new skill? Sailing. <laughs> so for I. For anybody who does, for anybody who doesn't know, sa sailing is an old joke because I it was an April Fool's joke uh, a very long time ago. It's definitely been ten plus years now, but uh, there was a official forum post made that they were going to add sailing into the game. And so it's been a running joke for all this time. Um, it's funny looking back at it now, because it's like, obviously there was no way to anticipate it, um, where the economy would be in RS3, for example. And I'm, you know, obviously this is for RS3, so we'll just keep it there. But uh, I think sailing would be kind of a cool skill. There's other games out there, like really niche games, like uh, there's one called uh, Mabinogi and uh, some Korean or Japanese based uh, role playing game and they have a commerce system in it. So it's like, uh, if you take this batch of goods from point A to point B, or I'm sorry, from A to Z or whatever, it doesn't matter, but um, you're carrying these goods on you and along the way, random encounters. So like for us, it would be like random events would just pop up and attack you and if you don't have the required combat levels, if you're not paying attention, whatever the case may be, it damages the good goods, ultimately, ultimately leading to a lower payout from what you get. So then obviously, let's just say if you start at Port Serum and you're taking your goods to Falador, you're only gonna get like low end stuff because the distance is only there to there. But if you're, for instance, locked where you can't teleport and stuff, obviously with the goods, you have to actually walk there. If you're from Lumbridge or Alcarid, for example, all the way up to Prith, 
and you have to walk there, you know what I'm saying, including the traps, including the, the whole bits and stuff, it's going to pay out way more. So that's like a commerce type of trade skill, and yeah. that falls in line with sailing. It would be the same exact principle. Instead of just walking, you would be, I guess, doing a sailing sort of mini game to keep the ship alive, obviously. I mean, they've already got the mechanics with that as far as fishing trawler and stuff is concerned. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Kind of like a like a cops and robbers type of thing, where <laughs> you know you're you're like a you're like an escort, and uh, right. there's things attacking, and you're right. the one defending, or yeah. vice versa, and, yeah. and fixing, and etc. And like and then like. If, if sailing or commerce was ever in, uh, like forget the sailing aspect of it but just a commerce mechanic was ever implemented it would be it would be it, it, it's a gold maker so as far as rs3 is concerned or or whatever it might not be a straight gold maybe they'll implement another currency but um there would be some type of currency um, involved in that and it'd be up to you to determine what kind of goods you're putting on there so like low risk goods that are going to pay out low amounts of money will prove to have less risk of people attacking you and there were those random occurrences versus you rolling up with you know you know however they played it let's just say it's like something easy like sapphires fucking rubies diamonds all the way up to dragonstone so then like if you're if you're moving a bunch of dragonstone stuff then you're gonna have everybody pounce on you. So yeah. I think that mechanic would be cool. Yeah, um, it's definitely it's definitely a real thing. As, as much as it is a running joke, um, if they actually implemented it and did it good and not half-assed, there'd be there'd be tons of things. As far as a new skill, um, I think warding was kind of a thing. I don't know if that was RS3 or if it was old school. I was talking about yeah, warding. Yeah. Um, it didn't pass. I'm glad it didn't. It's kind of a I don't know. I think I think a skill I think a skill with a combat mechanic would be good. I feel like there are people who use summoning for like at its maximum capacity, but then I also feel like they don't. I feel like people who use summoning now are just like, here's my pack yak, here's my extra inventory room. No, you oh, come no, with me. No, 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 no. Summoning is a huge part of DPS cycles. Like huge. Yeah. And that's good. And then so so and that's then that's my point exactly. So if that's the case, and summoning is still utilized at end game intervals, then there really is no super big need for a combat thing. But then again, maybe there is that I'm not seeing and stuff like that. Or even if it's not needed, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not freaking cool and that they shouldn't. Um, as far as uh, as far as the skilling and stuff is concerned, though, I feel like it'd be in, I feel like it'd be in the best interest for new players and old players to have a skill that forces you to go around the game world. Not stand in one spot for multiple hours, whether doing a tree, doing a fish, doing whatever. Obviously combat's different, but uh, Slayer's different, stuff like that. But like, if it's a skill that re that involves traveling, I think that'd be yeah. the best bet. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like, I, I like the idea of risk versus reward. Um, so, I mean, what I was thinking was so I, I I didn't I couldn't come up with uh, with actually kind of like pinpointing a skill specifically uh, because I, I don't know in my opinion I find it difficult to um, to kind of visualize uh, how something would specifically fit into the world of Gilinor but um, I just think that for the new skill, I would love to see something along the lines of um, dungeoneering. Now, not not how dungeoneering is laid out itself uh, in the current game, but you know, some kind of like instanced, like instanced skill where. Um, it would be it could be done solo it could be done in groups there was um some type of mechanic of um randomization um you know just some skill along those lines um, but then again wouldn't you just say we already have that in the game uh i mean yeah but 
I mean, it, well, okay. Well, wait. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, a, a new skill would be a new skill. I mean. Oh no, no, of course. But like, I'm I'm currently just looking right at the last three skills that were implemented, which obviously divination. It's it's a gathering skill. It's nothing special. Obviously, it has some like the output is pretty interesting, but it's it's just a gathering skill. But the last two skills were invention, which is arguably one of the most impactful, if not the most impactful skill ever to be released and archaeology which also had a huge impact on well invention but also on um, combat skilling etc with all the relics that they you know came out with so i feel like the standard that they set with the last two skill releases is so incredibly high that anything that just i feel like we can come up with or just even that looks or is slightly similar to an old skill would just not i don't know i don't want to say wouldn't fit but i feel like even for them is something that they wouldn't release so to say mm -hmm. so so what are you saying like are you suggesting that they just go like how do i want to put it like just go in the direction of just something completely unexpected i guess you could say yeah i, I feel like we will get because honestly invention or archaeology is something i would have never like divination was something i could have thought of that's very easy to say in hindsight of course but like if you would have asked me before divination would be released to think of a skill that's in runescape it would be a gathering skill then i could think of something like divination uh, or something like invention or something especially archaeology mm. i at least couldn't think of and i don't know about you guys but like to me those ideas are very unique very fresh yeah and it's not something that like obviously archaeology in essence is just a gathering skill but the way they laid it out and the way they went about it with the mini quest with all the dick size with the lore with the relics with the um the collection logs etc it just implemented so many things in just one skill yeah yeah fair 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 and enough i feel like whatever like i've i've made a video on this it still needs to be uploaded but the only thing i can personally think of is something kind of what you both described mashed together where do you guys remember the pitch for artisan in old school runescape yeah kind of i do not know okay so artisan pretty much the pitch was pretty much it's slayer but skilling so exactly. you, would, exactly. you would go to, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah you would go to like an artisan master and you would get a task like cut 50 u -log, for example i'm not saying that that should be the skill but i think that essence that idea could yeah. really form something with the what you said about exploration getting you all across the game implement yeah. all these like new little areas where you could have some sort of like mini bosses that you can do with different types of players like you can do it in a group you can do it alone whatever and make things like a winter tot in runescape 3 where you can train fire making and you get a task to take out 10 winter tots and you train the artisan skill with that yeah that, I, th I like I that think, i think it's exactly on point i and, and if they're and if they're and I'll, I'll go as far as if they're smart if they are smart they will mm -hmm. implement something like that because the, the, and here's the thing is that there's an argument too i know You'll have people that are like, it's an MMORPG game, but then there's other people that are like, well, I don't want to talk to nobody. But I think yeah. that everybody, I think that everybody agrees on the fact that they like seeing other players. And so, 100%. the idea of I don't, I don't. This is just my preference. I don't like the idea of something instanced, only because they're going to be niche, tight group people that are going to just boost the skill and be like easy day. You know what I'm saying? Because they have shared accounts and it's instance and they're not active and stuff. But and th that's just a personal preference. And even if they did do that, what, who am I to say that they shouldn't do that? I sh I can't. However, I think that for all for 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 a skill on Jagex's part, if I was a member of Jagex, not as a community member, but as a member of Jagex, it'd be smart for me to make the decision of, okay, what can we do for to to bring something fresh. But then also use old assets because that's important too. Whenever yeah. they're making a new skill and funding all this stuff, it's like how much can we use but still get away with making it new? 
I just think that exactly the whole artisans, artisans, if that if that should be it. Like if that was already something implemented and didn't get passed, it's bullshit because that's perfect. It's literally Slayer for skilling and. And, and having a new zone, having a new skilling area for artisans would make perfect sense because then it's like a little hub where you'll see, you don't have to necessarily, you don't have to be grouping with these people or talking to these people, but you're in an area for a fresh skill that isn't like divination where it's like there's these little spots out time of each city. It's one big spot where you got all these vendors and blah, blah to collect your artisan contracts and everybody's just running around filling their contracts up and stuff like that. And then you travel to old content so like if it's like your artisan's thing is like you gotta go make these fire runes but there's special fire runes it's like don't freaking topper with them or they'll break or whatever you know it, it could be anything but just like more of an incentive to uh but yeah anyway yeah so that's basically it i think i think that's i think that's a terrific idea I think yeah that, i like it as well I also Super think smart. that you can like, for example, fishing trawler is something you could do for like the fishing skilling boss, like maybe update a little bit so it's actually, you know, Good. not 20 minutes long. <laughs> well, um, they, they, like Chev, like, to be honest, we, we already have the perfect fishing skilling boss in the game. And can you, can you think of what I'm thinking? Crosses? No, the uh, the th the solace. Wait, the what? The the uh, the losses, the the losses, the the uh, big. Oh, wait, the whale. Yeah, the no, the big, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the big thing that you fight in, like I think it's uh, is it the slug, the slug quest line? Um, oh. Or, yes. Yeah, the the losses, or whatever it's called. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They could, they could take, they could take that thing and put it as a, a fishing ceiling boss. That'd be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, I just think that, that they can do something with that to just also like introduce new skilling methods for other skills and also to just revitalize old content, but also to have space to create new content without like, like you were saying, Monk, with using old assets, whether that's actual assets or just ideas yeah areas just areas like yeah like I, i'm tired of walking into varak and it being dead i'm tired of walking or like you know the, like the, the the map is already just just a casual standpoint it's just too big it's too big and there's so they added so many new areas in the game over and over and over and over again obviously the big one was prith Nobody liked the idea of putting a, a GE in Prif because then it took away from the Varrock one. And it's like, again, and then it's arguable. It is, you know, I, I got access to Prif. It's like, I like using Prif. It makes me feel like I accomplished something and I had this awesome area. But then there are people in the game who aren't interested in questing and stuff like that. And then it will never get there. And it's like, you know, but they're still cool people. There's still people I want to see and stuff like that. So it's like, new skill, implement old area. If they made a new skill, and you can get to 99 just by being in Varrock. You don't ever have to leave Varrock. Imagine how booming that place will be for the first couple <laughs> weeks while everybody is running around doing this new skill. It'll be like, it's crazy. And just because I'm biased and I like I like to remember on the olden days and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily have to be Varrock or anything like that. It's just like, whatever this new skill is, it needs to be not dependent. It, it doesn't need to be group dependent. But it can. It should have that option available if you want to, just to have fun with people. But it also needs to be in. An, it needs to be in rather an old area as a whole, and you just stay in that new that old area, or it takes you to other places that are like older stuff. You know, this the idea of course is what I'm going after, like the altar of the guard or the 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 rift of the guardians thing, the mini game yeah. room crafting old school, but. The idea of it not being instanced, which means like, like, some like low B level noob is like, I'm gonna go make my first air runes, and they come in there and they see like fucking 50 people teleporting in and out, and they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, gets them interested in the skill and stuff and see what's happening. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. But I think the most important thing that you're saying is like that people should not feel like they have to group up because oh, yeah. I feel like that's such a huge problem because a lot of people. Like, let's be honest, there are a lot of non-social people 
in RuneScape, but there are also a lot of people who are very efficient that are just toxic towards other people. Like I do a lot of crosses. I love crosses. One of my favorite bosses. It's a group boss. And the amount of toxicity I just see when I go there, just in general, like surrounding it. Not is... having the right skills, not having the right armors. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and hate I, pubs. I, I hate pubs. It's yeah. it's it's such an issue because like, but even the things like people lying about being a learner. Like if you tell me and the team, hey, I'm a learner, I'm okay with that. Like I'm completely fine with it. Just be honest about it. But I've had people that were clearly learners that didn't say it and then started blaming other people. And then those people left because well, someone was being toxic towards them. And I'm like, you just ruined my hour, but also the hour of two other people. Like, yeah. why? And I think it's like, maybe you get like a 1% or 2% experience boost when you do it with other players. So there's like a slight incentive to do it, but not like a big one. And that's a big thing that I always forget about too, is just how fucking terrible our community is. And like at yeah. the end of the day, at the end of the day, I hope the new skill, I hope everybody hates it. I literally hope that everybody hates it and nobody gets out of fun out of it because the people, you know, I, I consider myself <laughs> and people don't like it, a Jagex butt writer, but it's, you know, they've, they've put out really good content over the yes. years. It's an amazing game and it's like, you know, you can nitpick it all day long. It's just, it's just too easy to be hateful and not appreciate things like that. So it's like, I really hope that uh, the other half of me, obviously, in a non-constructive way, I hope the deconstructive way is like, screw that. Like, if you want to min-max a game, like you should have it. But you, like, as far as the community is, like the only reason why your voice is the loudest is because you're just hating the hardest. And it's like, take your hate, take it somewhere else. Like, you're min-maxing bullshit. And again, like you should have every right to min-max and stuff like that. But mechanics, as far as the game is concerned, it just sucks because everything's a trade-off. If you make it to where it's too independent, then people will take advantage of it and they'll, you know, like if, if it's just like you, they can bot it, you know what I'm saying? If it's too independent, it can be botted. And then if it's not too independent, then they, then you have thresholds of people that are having expectancies of what's this person's DPS and can he carry his own and blah, blah, blah. Because we're not, we're not trying to take any carries and we're not slacking over here. We're going to be the best, even though, you know, none of these people are the fucking high scoreboards to begin with. And it's like, <laughs> it's just silly, dude. Like, yeah. There needs there needs there needs to be and and I'll go back on that commerce thing as well. Like whatever this new skill needs to be, the wealth gap is so high, okay, that there should be, you know, there are so many people out there that have hundreds of millions and like even that is probably laughable cuz people are like that's that's rookie numbers, but like at the rookie end of numbers. the day, but at the end of the day for the price and justifying of like for bonds for instance, like it, 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 it's it's robbery to do that to somebody new because they feel compelled like there's so many people that have all this money and then even if I spend all my real life money it's still not nowhere near as close whatever this new skill needs to be it needs to be a money maker without getting the economy involved I know here's the problem with that people are going to be like what the fuck I think that it's smart play there is so much money wrapped up in the economy as it is why add more to it well I think that it's not necessarily all that money is in the economy. I really believe that all that money is into a certain percentage of the economy. And I don't know how to combat that. I'll, usually what that is is gold sinks, you know, give them something worth a bunch of money and then they're going to buy it. And then, you know, tax. we're going to get a GE tech. So that will probably yeah, I actually, I actually wanted to, to actually go into that because I think, I, I think I heard that the um, the GE tax was uh, yeah well so I don't I wasn't gonna go into the GE tax necessarily but Chev I did want to uh, get your thoughts on this because you obviously do a great deal of PVM but uh, you know updated death costs are coming mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know that is a huge deal uh, for the for the community. So, uh, do you? How do you see Jagex? Uh, you know, uh, getting that uh, situated. I, I think it's, see the thing is with death death costs, it's so difficult because first of all, we don't really know what they're gonna do. I'm pretty sure they're gonna, from what I understand, is that they're gonna decrease the amount to like 10% of what it is now 
which is okay. Like Death Calls was introduced long a long time ago and to sink some money from the game, which is good. It was way before invention even, I believe. So invention already sank a lot of items from the game. But I think that the Grand Exchange tax will also sink money from the game. So I feel like they see that and that they don't need the money sink from Death Calls. And I think it's really good because I think a big, big, big issue with Death Cost is it's keeping people from wanting to learn a boss because, you know, it's hard for people. Most people think on the short term, right? I die at a boss. I have probably when you have starter gear bosses, you probably pay a mil, maybe max. Yeah. You lose one mil, maybe two mil GP because you're learning a boss and you die 10 times, you lose 20 mil. And a lot of people don't see the long term of it. Obviously, you might, you know, invest like 20 mil now, but you make that back in the long term with a boss. Um, but it still keeps people from learning a boss. And I'm going to be honest, even though I have a lot of money in RuneScape, <laughs> well, not that much money, but like I'm I'm not poor by any means. And if I need money, I go do crew scrolls and within like two weeks, I can make a bill. Like it's not difficult for me. And do your clues, kids. Do your clues. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is with updating dev costs to something reasonable is good for people learn the, the game, but also for the people that are really pushing at really, really end game high. Because like the high, high, high end people, like my dev costs with Crypt Bloom and the FSOA and just my gear is about 5 mil. People like Evo Lucario and DRS guy are literally paying like 20 million in death cost. And especially when you push those high, high enraged bosses and those difficult challenges and stuff, you die a lot. So you spend hundreds and hundreds of mils just doing this one challenge. You could say, well, they will earn it back. But for them, it's just this like niche one time kill thing that they want to, you know, achieve. And it's just a small few people like they want to achieve because of the video or for whatever things and like a casual player would never go for it because they're like I'm not going to spend two bill on death cost because I'm going to die at Telos a hundred times because I want to do it without food yeah and I think that will also add a little thing that's very niche of course but still I think it's I think it's absolutely crazy I think I think uh, I, I, you know for a dog get out of here go <laughs> scooch <laughs> I think uh I think they they kind of okay. So death costs. Now I understand what you guys are saying. That yeah. that's a lot of money. So like as the casual player, it's not really ever going to affect the casual player because at the end of the day, uh, casual does not put you up to the high end bosses. No. So so if you but if you end up getting to that point, talking about you know again like it just depends. I don't I don't. I, 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 in, in, within the end of this quarter, the end of this quarter, I will, I will see some, because I'm, 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 just, I've been playing RuneScape a long time. I know that I will be seeing some sort of end game kind of money making methods, and because of that, I'll be able to gauge it more accordingly. But as a whole, for death costs, just death period, I think needs to be reworked. I think that while while it might sound kind of silly, obviously the format's there. Uh, most MMO RPGs do this, and, and obviously WoW being one of them. But as a whole, I feel like all items, all combat-related items, should be degradable. Period. I feel like if it's bronze all the way up to the, the top tier gear, it should be degradable. And because of that, you have a you have a reason to be uh, seeking not just gold. Well, it is just gold in RuneScape, but you know you have from a, from an early start. If you die, your items are going to be degraded. If you are, you know, so as far as boss retrieval gold and stuff like that, though, or I'm sorry, boss retrieval gear and doing a, a boss and you die and having that back, it's like, I feel like it's a lot of money in play. Um, but even even still, let's just say, let's just say it's 10, let's just say it's 10 mil to get your, uh, to get or, or 100 mil or whatever i don't even know the numbers <laughs> it's just we're talking crazy numbers here of well, like versus how much your your high-end gear is going to cost you that that should be ratioed okay so like for instance like if your total gear that you 
that you buy, um, let's just say a bronze set, okay? So like, it's only gonna cost you, let's just say a thousand, thousand gold, something really small number here, I don't know, probably, actually, I know it costs more than that. It's, what is <laughs> I was about to say, I'm pretty sure it's like 5K, maybe even Yeah, it's probably, exactly, it's probably exactly 5K, because I think, or, 10, or 10K, because I think like an Iron Helm is like freaking 7K, it's silly. Anyways, um, let's just say full bronze is 10K, and the durability on it, and I'm using round numbers just to make it easy, but like you die, you die once, and you can fully repair your gear for 500 gold. Okay, but then you die multiple times, and the durability goes down. And should there be a mechanic of are you going to get hit harder if the durability is down, blah blah? I think that's probably appropriate. But at the end of the day, I feel like that would be good for end game because at end game, it's like no, you're not going to be paying a base rate. However, the mechanic would work as in where if I die to a goblin, it ain't going to freaking drop my stuff down. But if I die to the beefiest boss. Um, it should take your gear because it, because it, that boss can hit you harder theoretically. That if you're wearing top tier gear and you walk in there and get top tier slapped and you die, yes, you can get your armor back, but no, the durability isn't going to be like you died once. It's going to be like that that armor just you died, your your helmet smashed in, your plate body smashed in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's pretty much useless, and then you have to pay a repair cost versus you. So then again. E and then, and then, th th then that goes into the very thing. I don't, I don't know what the RS3 PK community is like anymore. But what there's I will say, that non-existent. <laughs> there's well, no, there's no PKing anymore. <laughs> well, well, easy peasy. Then here it is. And then the durability thing works the same in the wilderness, except for you just you still lose your however many items, if not all of your scold uh, on death. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same exact thing. Basically, all I'm trying to say is that they need a repair system. And like, no, not like a repair system, like you can avoid the cost of gold by going and repairing it yourself at a smithy, but instead being like, no, you uh, you know, you gotta go to Bob, you know, you gotta go to whoever to repair your gear. Um, and then they have one guy implemented in each major city. And, um, and as far as on death retrieval of your items, it just needs to be reworked as in like, again, I just don't, I don't feel like that should be the gold sink. The gold sink should not be to try out new bosses because like referring back to what you were saying it's going to discourage new people from trying to do that because they're like that's a lot of money and it sucks because there's a majority there's there, there's there's a there's there is a there is a there is a statistic amount of people who have that kind of money to be able to afford it versus the whole i would assume but maybe not maybe i'm wrong as far as says. maybe maybe there's even the casual players have all this money and i just i just haven't gotten that point myself yet coming back you know i only been back so long but I genuinely feel like it just needs to be reworked under the guise of there is a beaver in my front yard. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it just needs to be reworked. And uh, I, I don't feel like that needs to be the money sink. I feel like the money sink needs to come from somewhere else. Something more productive, you know, like... Um, G so what, well, what if they just did something... What if they work construction so where you can actually buy a castle now and, and not just like a clan citadel like actually you could buy your own fucking castle in an instance area there you go gold sink and then it's just a big fucking flex <laughs> yep what but the, the, i th think the, i think to come to your point with the arm degradation i feel like it will just only lean into the issue people wanting to not try pvm even more which already is like a huge huge issue um so I feel like if the hard work, like the armor that they got, that they spend hours and hours getting, they will get worse because they are bad. They will just not PVM at all. So what? You're, 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 saying, you're saying with my thing, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I think, I think personally, I like the idea because like it adds, adds it adds Jesus Christ, adds some risk to the, you know, to dying. But then again, that is currently the issue for a lot of people, even with like a small amount of money that you pay like 1 million or 500k or whatever, is that keeps them from wanting to even PVM in the first place or try a new boss that they're not comfortable with. And I feel like if your hard earned gear that you spend even longer accumulating than that 500k or 1 million, it will stop even more people from even wanting to PVM because they don't want that gear to deplete, so they just go to the things that they're already like comfortable with. What? Okay. What if they just? What if they just simply did five free deaths a day? 
yeah. to be to be fair, I, I'm I'm more of the system of like the first X amount of kills are just free. Whatever that amount is, like first ten, first fifteen, first twenty-five, first fifty, whatever. Whatever it is, it has to be an implement of risk versus reward. So, like all, like what I was saying, should end up being there's there's still a gold sink, but not not nearly as much as like millions we're talking about. So, like if you have if you have a gear set that's one bill, okay, I'll I'll, I'll use bigger numbers here. If you have a gear set that's one bill and you die and it degrades like i said not completely not not to the point see that's the thing is that it's not useless but you could still equip it and you can still use it you're just going to take more damage you know if it's like it's like oh i almost got that kill and it was what it was one it was one hp away you know i could do it still even with my shitty ass gear and not pay a dollar and then you get whatever those drops are compared to but you know, because there's still going to be money. Why you PVM is, of course, for achievements and stuff like that. But most of the time, it's going to be because of whatever the hell that boss is dropping. You know, what I'm saying there, it has to be a risk versus reward at the end of the day. So I, like, if I could have it my way, you know, as a casual way or whatever, which is not not the way, of course. But you know, it's like you die, you die. You should just lose your stuff. The fact that we have systems in place to where you could just pay gold to get your items back, especially if it's not the amount that the, the equipment was even worth. So you have one bill and it costs you 500 mil to get it back. I think that's pretty fucking crazy. I think it's crazy that they even have it. However, it's it's good for the economy because there is a lot of gold and fluctuation and stuff like that. But but the idea for the but the idea for the, dur the the durability aspect of it is just to make it cheaper on people instead of paying a base, you know, one bill gear where you'd be paying half of that just to get it back is like your durability goes down, but you just have to, the inconvenience is that you have to go find somebody that will fix it for you for a fraction of that, let's just say 250 mil versus the 500 that you would pay at an item retrieval. That's what, what I was getting at. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 in theory, that would incentivize people to go out there and, and to do that. And it would incentivize people as well, even though it still kind of does already, to do it first try. You know, go watch a YouTube video, go do a wiki guide, whatever the case may be, before you go in there, guns blazing, you know. In theory, people shouldn't have <laughs> the best of the best gear already and then be going to do their first boss fights right so like in theory the the, the game was over, obviously what was built on is that even though we call it welfare gear now you were supposed to have welfare gear to kill these bosses to get the best of the armor in the game you know and then and then who who is the biggest and baddest boss of all well that's the other person that's the other player and that's why you take the bad, baddest gear of the game and you go out and you fight against other players which yeah is that, which that was the, that was the theory you know it doesn't work that way anymore of course so i can't you know attest to that but um you know i think the yeah. gold sink should not come from armor i think the golds and that that was the point of the durability not to make it harder on people but to actually save them more money by implementing that and then make the gold sink anywhere anywhere else it doesn't necessarily have to be cosmetic it could just be like new new construction improvements and stuff like that well, yeah. i mean what the hell what the hell is construction now you have a house that has your you know, has all your rejuvenation things your portals and stuff like that i'm not sure it's the same exact thing for rs3 and it's like it's, like like we have multi-floor houses make, make make them sweet make them castles now now you can go in and have your own castle and then it's going to cost you a crap load and it's like man if you got the money you can you can have the best castle in all the land <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah um all right well oh i think we've covered really most everything um there's just a couple questions left that we can cool. kind of yeah welcome back dude um <laughs> i'm gonna be i'm gonna be closing it out here um since we've been going for going for a couple hours now um but yeah the last the last two things that i have here uh in my outline was just um they in 2023 they did say that they want to start involving a new storyline um so that would mean a new a new quest series um just real quick uh i was i was giving this a thought and um and uh so i've been the the video that i've been making um my next lore video 
Uh, I've been doing the Ports Adventure, um, The Exile, and uh, they are from the Garaho uh, clan, which is the the people in Dungeoneering, basically. Mm-hmm. And I thought I thought a, a, a quest line involving the Garaho would be really cool. Um, I mean, of course, we do have uh, the Fremnic Sagas, which are little tiny mini quests that somewhat involve them, I guess you could say. Um, and there are a few other quests that like are in Dungeoneering, but don't specifically involve the race of the Garaho. But I was just thinking that that could be a cool direction. Um, have a have a storyline revolving around them and where they come from, which is the spirit plane. And maybe they could just do something with the spirit plane, with the Garaho, um, Dungeoneering. Um, you know, maybe involve, uh, you know, that the mini game or the D and D familiarization that actually takes place on the spirit plane. Um, does it? Yeah, it does. Oh, wow. So yeah, I don't know. I just thought I just thought that c- could be a, a direction they go in. Um, but I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. Um, if you'd like to mm-hmm. see see the conclusion to any existing storylines or um i i do feel like that they kind of do like i I think it's difficult because i i do like what you're saying like we have all these like threats that they can just build upon in the game and continue on and i would love that because the same what you're saying with like continuing on old storylines i really like that idea because they're pretty sure the slug menace quest line has never been finished yeah or has it has it been finished mm, i don't think it has. no it hasn't and i think there's a lot of quests with that as well but also a thing that they said recently in a live stream regarding content is that they want everyone to be able to join in with a new storyline and that you do not have to go through all these old tedious quests to be able to enjoy whatever new quest line they're doing so i don't know how that will fit in with their design philosophy and the direction they want to go with the game because i do understand their point of view they want you to maybe get some stats but just to be able to hop into a quest line and go from there and sure when quest number five comes out you need to do one and four but that it's like it's an entity on its own and if that is their philosophy that they want to do, like they can't really do anything with, they can do things with existing things in the game, but not with like old storylines, so to say. And I'm kind of indifferent to that point of view because on one hand I get it because obviously as a game developer, you want as many people to play whatever you develop as soon as possible. But on the other hand, like I'm also very close to completion escape. So I pretty much have all requirements that I probably ever need for anything that comes out regarding quests. So I don't care personally, but I understand from their point of view with like reaching as many players that they want something like a new quest line to be completely detached from something else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Do you have any, do you have any thoughts on that monk? Not any real thoughts other I mean other than just a little little uh, nut writing. I mean like I think the questing is great. I think obviously I've been doing it for a long time, so you know, playing those other quests that are exactly like they're almost just like pointless little spurts here and there of just things to do and stuff like that. They're actually implementing quest lines, which are excellent. That's one thing that I haven't got into yet with R S three is yeah, that, <laughs> that they're actually quest lines. So with Fresh yeah. Art Worlds, I've been actually a little jaded and that's why i haven't actually put out any content because uh, i wanted to but i haven't only because i would like to do a series eventually which it's obviously not original there's a, probably a thousand other people on youtube have done it but just for myself you know what i'm saying to to go through the quest lines play them as like maybe even silent let's plays or something like that or whatever the case may be um i think that it's terrific that they have them 
Um, but as of right now, through Fresh Start Worlds, I've just been doing from difficulty. So like, I'm literally starting at the very bottom of the list because I have obviously, I don't have the skills to do them uh, and complete full quest line. So just going by difficulty and going from the from the down to the bottom. I think I'm already in Fresh Start Worlds. I think I'm getting my first uh, 100 quest points here, uh, probably tonight even. Just and that, that's barely even trying. I, I haven't even logged in for like two days now, but. Um, yeah, I, I love the quest. I love where they're going. The voice acting uh, quests is like new to me too. So they need like, to do I, more. That's my main yeah. issue. Like there's like full storylines, like the Slist storyline. Some quests have voice acting and like the main ones, like the bigger ones do not have voice acting. And it just annoys me because I feel yeah. like I'm not going to read it. <laughs> and if it's all voice acting, especially like the big, big, big storylines, I would probably listen to it. That's how they need to play it. Because yeah, if they, I agree. That's exactly how I am. When, it, when it's like simple, tedious quests like that, it usually transpires with the dialogue. So if it's like an easy quest, could be like, for instance, that cook's assistant or whatever. Yeah. It's like, grab me an egg, grab me a this, grab me a that, and you're good to go. But then when you have advanced dialogues like that, it's just everybody's notorious holding that space bar, just letting them go through. And I mean, like sometimes even I've noticed too in a couple of quests I've done the past couple of days, it's like, wow, like this is I'm holding the I'm holding this space bar for freaking you know thirty seconds at a time, like just because it's just so much to go over. And I, you know, reading reading is super important. I feel like not enough not enough people anymore do read. Um, but I actually like read books. So like when I'm staring at the screen. It's really hard for me to like just with my eyes and just being a boomer or whatever. But like, it's really hard for me to just like want to be and want to be there in reading that that text anymore. Like, it's definitely gonna help a lot. But again, I can't. No fault of their own. That is expensive. Just oh, even getting developers yeah. and stuff. It's like, and then you and then not only do you want voice actors, but you got to pay the good ones. So like, they're not cheap. <laughs> and yeah. like, so uh, uh, as as a wish. Man, as a wish, they just need yeah. to make their game fully. Uh, and it's and the the problem with the Brunescape is that it's just there's just so much. Even even at all the irrelevant content, but that that people don't even don't even look back on there more. Content, regardless, there's just it's so much. But if on a pipe dream, if I could wish for it, they need absolutely need to. They they absolutely should just for my own sake. Yeah, make, the, make the, the entirety of the game fully voice acted. When I talk to yeah. a general store clerk, hey, how's it going? You know, let me look what we got here. You know, they, they, there's so many. Even if, and I don't care. Like, you know, not everybody has to be individuals and stuff like that. Like, look at Skyrim. All the shopkeepers can sound the same. All of the men, women, whatever can sound the same and stuff like that. Even even hire one actor to do. Or, you know one character per storyline you know what i'm saying so like one voice actor might have the same voice actor as another character for a different storyline but as long as they're not paying multiple roles in the same storyline you know however they gotta fees it i don't care but it would be super cool yeah <laughs> but other than that yeah, the yeah, quest, yeah, yeah. The, the, really the quest is the only reason why i'm here man that's the only reason why i'm doing this podcast the only reason why i'm playing the game right now is because uh there there is uh some general love in there for me to go back on and stuff like that uh uh, like bossing and stuff is second uh, to PvPing for me. Um, questing and PvPing is where I've always been at. Stilling and bossing has kind of been like eh, but uh, for me. But you know, while there is no really PK scene in RS3, it's like I'm totally cool with just questing it up and getting my little fantasy novelty out of that bit. <laughs> and to, to add to your point that being expensive, there's another issue that they literally brought up themselves is. Sometimes these storylines take years and years to develop. And by the time the next quest comes out, the voice actor might be doing something completely different at that time. Yeah. So they can't hire the same people. And then obviously if you hire someone else, it will break the immersion. So it's better to just not hire anyone. Yeah. Which I understand as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, writing, writing, to me like like on a personal note like that's what i like to do outside of like in the real world i like to write and it's like mm -hmm. yeah for the game the game that i love the game that i've spent all these years playing and stuff like that 
I have a problem with them telling me that it takes years and years and years for them to write a storyline because it's like, don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying them. I think they're great, and maybe that is years of progress. But it's like, if it's taking you that long, you need to hire some new writers. <laughs> I just, it's, you know, that's that's pretty bad. Like, I mean, like, like, like it's great, but it's not like you're not winning awards off this stuff either. So it's like maybe, maybe just you know, I don't, I don't want you to 23 skidoo me some sort of storyline that it's like, okay, I'm not engaged in. But at the same time, too, it's like, I mean. That's the problem with fantasy is that there a lot of it's already been said and a lot of a lot of it's already been done. So then you have to have the unique aspect of it. You can't just have a Game of Thrones or a World of Warcraft rip off in, rip off in your RuneScape game, which I totally yeah. wouldn't want anyways to begin with. But you know, I, 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 I as a casual, I know they pretty much milk the gods like the whole storyline with, and then they add even more gods in it. Like so, okay, like obviously you can't do that, but like you know, whatever yeah. the case may be, I think. I think Jagex does a really good job of of adding um you know humor and pop culture references within the quest uh dialogue totally. and stuff to keep it fresh and and um you know still have a a serious overarching uh narrative and stuff uh within their their quest. But um can we can we all agree before before last final thing on quest? Can we all agree that the penguin quest line is by far the best quest line when it comes to like funniness, humor, etc. Like it's just incredible. Yeah, it is. Well, it is pretty top notch. Again. It is yeah, top notch. I, yeah. I have I have my quest cape on old school, and uh, and, and I, I have to keep up to date with that, so I keep in stuff. I do not have it on RS3. I don't know if they've actually updated the ping, penguin quest line and stuff or not since. Oh I yes, it, there's but... like after cold waters, not like three quests. Okay, yeah, I'll have to go back on it and stuff. I'll just take the word for it now, but I'll let you know in the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, for just the last question here, um, we can can uh, power through this, but um, they did they did mention that obviously within major content releases, they are going to be obviously doing more ninja strikes and with the last ninja strike they made uh solak solable as well as um some other just quality of life updates and stuff um are there any quality of life updates you guys like to to see just within your own sort of unique uh bubble of 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 play style that you uh, enjoy RuneScape in. Well, Monk, you can go first because I have an entire list which I'm not gonna do. But <laughs> it's it's easy to critique, you know what I mean. So it's like, as far as quality of life stuff is concerned, I could, you know, anybody. It's just so easy to be like, well, this and this and this. But at the end of the day, a lot of it is subjective, and uh, uh, and if you're referring to you know the quote unquote community, and that's how I always will phrase it, you're only gonna hear the negative stuff. So it's like. They can fix negative stuff all day long. Quality of life, period, for me personally, again, goes back to the reading aspect of it. I feel like, I don't know, it's hard because it's an adventure game, right? So, like, it w was initially an adventure game where it was something that you were supposed to log in and time was not supposed to be of the essence and you were supposed to rough it out has turned into now press enter on your spacebar if you have it opted in uh, press enter on your spacebar and just type in the wiki button and then i'll pull you up to a website i feel like quality of life as a whole i feel like i'm going to refer back to uh new new coming players and if that's and if that's the case and how to make it more appeasable to new coming players is that chances are with mobile and I know that I haven't even opened up mobile yet for RS3 or anything like that, but there are going to be people on there. I feel like the wiki is not going to be, even even though it has, like I said, the game has thousands, of, I mean, so much content to it, how they can implement this, I have no idea, but the reading format, taking yourself off of the game and into another website to read about whatever you're going to, 
it's rather it's rather this rather they don't change it at all and they keep it the way that it is so that way it has a sense of exploration and adventure you're gonna have to figure it out on your own but if you're gonna have stuff like well here's a link to the wiki page and put that on their mobile app to be like and if you have any questions refer to this i think that's kind of lazy i feel like with quality of life like runescape should have official uh tutorials that aren't implemented in the game so that way you're not bombarded by like a little oh here's a helpful tip and blah 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 blah. like I, I i don't like to see that i don't i think that takes away from the game but i also like the idea of like um a help button implemented that isn't just like customer support but actually is like a like a like like it'll be like a quest tab or like a quest tab and then it takes you straight to a video and the video shouldn't be something like us uh, like hey and then this is how you do it this should be like an official runescape thing that they have on their own team that's like you know rather rather involves on quests or skills or or, or even even yeah. even basic money making make money making methods like ones that aren't uh through you know ge means of making money but like in the sense of like i don't know i feel like quality of life stuff it's hard pressed but i feel like they need to implement more for returning players especially when it's like and this is how you cut a tree and this is how you fish your crawfish and this is how you do slayer and you're all set and then like the first player that I meet they're like oh man why aren't you doing this you fucking noob <laughs> like get good scrub and it's like okay they need to they need to set <laughs> players up way better and way more effectively without overloading them still cause yeah you overload them of course too but, yeah. yeah i feel like that's a better bit for quality of life all right chev I, I, I think that 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 it's not even a quality of life. I think that's just literally a game integrity issue, because the early game experience is terrible, and I can talk about it for an hour. But when it comes to ninja strikes, I just first of all want to say that some of the ninja strikes might be the best updates, like period ever. Like something as small as making search and blade of die not a combat um, triggering, whatever ability anymore if you're not using it in combat for example when you're searching around for clues has changed like clue scrolling dramatically in a very positive way because usually you were kind of like zooming around and certain clue scrolls are very close to a lodestone and then when you had a step that was close to a lodestone you had to wait before you could do your teleport to be out of combat and then you could do it and little fixes like that are just incredible from the ninja strikes or even just small things like attack speed on a familiar like or the way abilities interact with each other like they're incredible and i think we need more of them and even like i think a big up well it's not even a big update like a small quality of life that we need is something done towards agility shortcuts and adding a bit more to them Mm -hmm. yeah because i like that i feel like for example um I don't know. Are you guys locked into RuneScape right now? Are you guys AFKing something? No, I'm just talking. Okay, so for anyone who's currently AFKing watching this, if you zoom into the map to Gutha North, just south of Yenil, there's this little area where you see two exclamation marks. There's a bridge there that you cannot cross. You need to go all the way to the dungeon sign about like southwest of Gutha North. And then you will be teleported to the middle dungeon sign on that little island. Sure, I understand it. That's part of, you know, that area and how it works. It just feels really clunky because there's literally a bridge that if I have 99 agility, I should be jumping over. Obviously, I'm not saying you should have 99 agility, but there are a lot of places in the game that could just use a simple shortcut like that. It could just be a jump over option. It could be like hang a rope somewhere, whatever. There's so many of these little areas that you could just, that you just kind of have to clunkily walk around or do some weird pathing or whatever to get there when there should just be an agility shortcut yeah i like that yeah i mean i just want to <laughs> i just want to throw this out there to kind of to kind of uh you know as a as somebody who plays uh free to play quite quite a bit uh one quality of life update that i would love to see and i honestly in 2022 2023 i don't know why this is still a thing but free to play still cannot wear skill capes 
yeah, so which, 100%, yeah. which is so stupid and baffling to me. Like, I just think that that's totally ridiculous. <laughs> See, I understand so, more. I think it's even more prudent as well because it's like it's like now you have all these master class capes and stuff like that. Like it goes even far beyond, right? So it's like at least like like if you're gonna spend all the time in free to play to make that free to play cape because of it, that in itself is an achievement to get that skill cape. Yeah, all they have to do is whatever skills fall along. You know, obviously free to play. So like your combat skills and uh, you know. Uh, fishing whatever as long as you can get those capes they need to make the cape masters and a free to play area so you can literally walk up to it or make it easy whatever make 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 max actually sell you know the normal capes as well you know as long as you have the permittable 99 to it and yeah i, I think it's just stupid i think whatever it was only 99 capes it kind of made more sense yeah you know, exactly like, this is a yeah, yeah. thing but now that there's so many more capes to it it's like 99 capes aren't even the biggest deal but they're still a cape of accomplishment and you should be able to have them especially with the free to play i do feel like if they added to free to play remove the stats because yeah the stats are ridiculous oh yeah, you're talking true. about yeah that's i'm a pretty sure point. it's like plus 32 or something yeah but that i mean it's a lot you just think about it from the sense that i mean like getting a 99 in free to play is even more difficult and grindy than getting it in pay to play oh yeah 100 so i mean could you not reward us with the cape i mean <laughs> yeah but it, I mean, even still and like, it's like getting, getting rid of the stats on the cape like if you're free to yeah. play that just makes it the best cape in slot and what would be second what would be like, like as far as stats wise what would be even second to that cape not having a cape no best in slot best in slot free to play cape is uh veteran capes so five year cape 10 year cape 15 year cape those capes are actually best in slot free to play but most people just use like the drapes for all three combat styles um yeah there's not too many options honestly i really don't even think like i know that like it has obviously like combat stats but then like it'll have like their like perks that come with having the capes right in rs3 they still have those like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i guess so it's like so uh, however they want to work it i i don't even think the, like the actual the actual perks to the cape maybe that needs a little tweaking i don't have to look over every single cape to decide well, some that. just need tweaking as it is like or, or all you know what i'm saying but like as far as the stats is concerned like if you're already going to be free to play anyways and you have that cape and it has its combat stats like that i don't even think that needs to be nerfed because it's like why like because if you're free to play you're only going to be killing so many different things anyways and it's like it, i'm sure it might make you a little more efficient i'm mean, a little bit more overkill compared to like a free to play style but it's like you're locked to that content you're not going to experience any more any <laughs> after that anyway so like fine let them hit a yeah. little harder you know so they can grind their free to play boss like down a little more i don't even that i think as far as the perks is concerned i feel like I, like i said i'd have to look over them and see if any of those were like really overpowered for you know free to play methods and stuff but again you already have I 99 anyway so it's like let them, I, let them have their free to play money making methods a little more proficient i mean you know, probably not gonna hurt anything either. they don't even have to they don't even have to do anything with the capes they don't need to to get rid of stats or get rid of the perks all they have to do is all they have to do is just make the cape cosmetic override and that as well that's yeah. it i think i think keepsake keys as a whole needs to be just redone i think that like the, the other MMO or RPG games where it's just like you go to a transmog station if you have the piece of armor and you want to turn it into this all you do is pay gold I don't the keepsake key I think is a cash grab personally for me and like so I think like just like you get the cape free to play or, or yeah make it easy make it easy literally like you just get yeah. you just unlock the achieve uh, you, you, you exactly you don't actually get a physical cape you just you hit your 99 and then poof a little thing comes up in your chat box it's like you are now eligible to equip this in your customization tab yeah you just get a freaking cape in your custom that that's yeah fair play that's, that's it that's the best way to do it yeah <laughs> all right guys um we we've been we've been trucking along here for quite a while so 
I think we've I think we're over the two hour mark uh, so I think we'll we'll cut it off there uh, I think we've gotten to to everything that that we uh, we planned on so any any closing closing thoughts closing remarks for you guys do you know yeah yeah clue scrolls it was a great chat it was great hanging out with y'all and i think we went over a lot of things thanks for listening to my long long long-winded uh fucking shit but yeah thank you all appreciate it yeah appreciate it as well retweet (laughs) (laughs) yeah hopefully uh hopefully we'll we'll continue with these uh these podcasts and uh, obviously, Chev, you know, you're welcome back anytime. Same with you, Thank Monk. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. yeah, cool, man. I appreciate you guys and uh, take care. Thanks. All right, peace. Thanks. Yep.